Hello everyone. Right now we are presenting a case of pregnancy with PH patient coming for elective cesarean section. Now we'll start the case presentation. Mrs. Sujita, 27 year old, coming from Chengalpet, a housewife by occupation. She presented with elevated blood pressure since 34 weeks of gestation. She is a primary gravida, booked an immunized case with her last menstrual period being 23-5-21 and expected date of delivery being 5-2-22. She is admitted for safe confinement of delivery. So while presenting a case, we usually start with the chief complaint. What has brought the patient to the hospital? Here the patient has come in for safe confinement. History of presenting illness. There is history of elevated blood pressure since 34 weeks of gestation and she was started on tablet Lebitalol 100 mg twice a day. There is no history of uh, severe preeclampsia features such as headache, blurring of vision, abdominal pain, breathlessness on exertion, swelling of legs, decreased urine output, chest pain or palpitation. History of present pregnancy. She conceived spontaneously which is confirmed by urine pregnancy test after 45 days of amenorrhea. First trimester dating scan was done at 7th week of gestation. She, she was put on tablet folic acid consumption. No history of any fever with rash and no history of excessive bleeding per vagina or excessive vomiting. Second trimester quickening was felt at 20th week of gestation. Two doses of tetanus toxoid was taken. She was continued with the tablet folic acid tablet and uh, iron tablets. Third trimester, she continues to perceive her fetal movement. There is no history of any vaginal discharge, bleeding per vaginum or abdominal pain. Menstrual history, she attained menarche at 15 years of age, once in every 28 to 30 days regular. Uh, there is no history of any dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia or blood clots. Past history, there is no history of any diabetes mellitus, uh, TB, asthma, and chronic hypertension or seizure disorder. Personal history, her bowel and bladder habits are regular. Uh, sleep and appetite are normal. Family history, there is no history of any hypertension in the family members. No history of any preeclampsia or uh, gestation hypertension in any of her siblings or mother. Treatment history, currently she is on tablet Labitalol 100 mg twice a day. So before we discuss further about the case, we will just see what are the physiological changes a pregnant patient undergoes and what are their anesthetic implications. So, what are the cardiovascular changes that usually occur during pregnancy and what are their imp clinical implications? So, the cardiovascular changes begins from the uh, fourth week of gestation to maximize the oxygen transport to the placenta. Here, here, the effects are due to the increasing level of estrogen and progesterone. We are getting the, the systolic and diastolic blood pressure gets decreased because of the vasodilatation and the decrease in peripheral vascular resistance and following which the reflex increase in heart rate and stroke volume causes your increase in cardiac output. So, increase in cardiac output favors the, the increase in the size of the heart and that is because of the uh, increase in the blood volume, stretch and force of contraction and increase in size of the cardiomyocyte. So, here the cardiac output is getting increased and coming to the, the examination findings, there is an accent, uh, on examination, there is an accentuation of the S1 and exaggerated spreading of the mitral and tricuspid components and uh, the, there is a presence of uh, S3 or S4 and uh, there is a, a ECG findings will be there will be a T wave flattening and ST depression and uh, the echo findings will be uh, there will be uh, ejection fraction is increased because of the increase in the end diastolic volume and uh, the annular diameter of the uh, mitre uh, except the aortic annulus other all annulus are getting dilated uh, getting increased in size and uh, there is an increase in the uh, uh, size of the heart and uh, the patients would be presenting with a low cardiac reserve. So, the, these patients, a pregnant patient has to be given adequate pain relief to decrease the work of the heart and uh, there is an increase in blood volume. So, which serves the purpose of uh, transferring the nutrients and metabolites uh, to the mother and fetus and uh, this also favors the auto transfusion that is occurring in the immediate postpartum period. So, the main pathology here is the patient goes in for a vasodilatation. Because of vasodilatation, there is a reduction in the peripheral vascular resistance and the hypotension. Okay, That's once the heart rate compensation mechanism rate increases, the stroke volume increases, so the ultimately the cardiac output is going to increase. So, whether the patient with a cardiac patient, whether the patient is able to handle this increased cardiac output will determine whether the patient is going to go for cardiac failure or the patient is going to continue with the pregnancy. So, that is why when we ask about history of a cardiac patient, you ask whether the patient had, he had a normal pregnancy. If the patient has had a normal pregnancy with the cardiac disease, more often than not, these patients would be able to sustain the pregnancy further. So, the main physiology changes we have seen. So, what about the auscultatory findings? So, the main here is there is an exaggerated or an accentuation of the first heart sound 
and there is a splitting of the mitral and the tricuspid components. There is a typical ejection systolic murmur which is usually functional in pregnancy. It is usually not associated with any organic or pathological lesions unless and until there is a murmur present. So there is a possible presence of third and fourth half zones may be present but it doesn't have any clinical significance. On examination you will find there is a left displacement of the maximum cardiac impulse. So what is iatrocaval compression syndrome? During the mid period of pregnancy around uh, 16 to 20 weeks of gestation when the gravid uterus when the parturient lies supine the gravid uterus causes compression of both the iota and IVC. So compression of inferior vena cava will cause decrease in venous return and decrease in cardiac output by 20 percent. In unanesthetized patient this gets compensated via alternative venous pathways uh, such as vertebral venous plexus as well as azygous veins and also uh, by increasing the systemic vascular resistance and increasing the heart rate. Under anesthesia these compensatory mechanisms are lost and patients will be ex uh, exhibiting profound hypotension. So this is the main problem. The gravid uterus starts compressing both the iota as well as the inferior vena cava. So what happens is the venous return starts reduces. Once the venous return reduces the cardiac output reduces. During a normal pregnancy the patients will be able to compensate it while the venous uh, the, all the uh, venous accessory veins will start opening up. So the venous return is being compensated. However, during the time of anesthesia, these compensatory mechanisms are getting abolished. So that is the main problem which will result in increased hypotension in the, uh, when you give the spinal anesthesia. So the most important step here is remote to remember here is we should keep the bridge uh, at the time of positioning the patient for any anesthesia, even general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia, we should always keep the wedge and always remember to transport the patient in the left lateral position. So what are the respiratory changes that occur during pregnancy and what are the clinical implications? So coming to the anatomical changes, the hormone called relaxin, it relaxes the lower ligaments uh, fibers. So and then the subcostal angles get widens from an uh, angle of 63.5 to 103.5 degree and the the upper respiratory tract like uh, nasal mucosa and uh, there will be an increase in the vascular congestion, nasal and uh, respiratory pathways and then the, uh, they are more prone for uh, difficult intubation and uh, coming to the uh, resistance, here the RV resistance is getting increased and uh, the mechanics, the lung volumes and capacities, so the lung volumes, the inspiratory reserve volume and residual volume is uh, getting uh, decreased and the uh, and the vital capacity remains unchanged, total lung capacity reduces, uh, expiratory reserve volume reduces.